very well. The white team by Mark Jarum. The black team by Jesse Suzanne. Mark Jarum of Loughborough Student Riders. Jesse Suzanne of Canterbury High School. Both having hugely successful seasons. But some of the players that we've got out on the floor for the white team. Robert Banks, the Division 2 Finals MVP with the Thames Valley Cavaliers. Seshan Russell coming off the back of a strong season with Charmwood College Riders and the Loughborough Student Riders winning Division 1. And then Sean Neal and Lino back from the Commonwealth Games and one of a cohort of uh, Falcon Abbey players. And then on the black team, two big guns that we talked about in the pre-show to hear, Michael Anumba and Caleb Fuller. Anumba, the under-18 finals MVP with the Manchester Magic. And Caleb Fuller, MVP in the EABL championship final when Barkin Abbey played Myersco College. He showed out in that game, just showing how diverse he is as a player. One of those wings that can just do it all for I'm, Team I'm, Black. I'm really impressed with Michael Anumba this season. I mean, every year his level of professionalism is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, he's definitely one of the players I'll be looking out for in this game. But listen, the names are endless. There's so many plays that we could pick out that we would expect to have a huge game of basketball right here. For us, ladies and gentlemen, we have the pleasure of sitting back and watching these boys go to work. Just to give you an idea of what it's like in this arena right now, 700 people packed into this sold out rough house, Brixton Wreck. It is ready to go down. The best of British talent, 48 players selected for the underclass and class of 2018. It is an absolutely crazy atmosphere in here with the best entertainment team in the business. We've got Mr. Funky Town, Namo Shiro, and ourselves, Ty Hadger and Liam Jefferson, keeping you guys at home entertained. Once again, leave us lots of comments throughout the game. Let us know your thoughts. And towards the end, let us know who you think the MVP will be. Because believe me, there is a list longer than my arm that I can name for that possibility. And the player's just taking the floor now. And immediately, the thing that you look at with these two teams is there is some size on the floor as Seshan Russell comes and says hello to us. There is some size on the floor. There is so much talent out there on the floor. Just looking at these starting fives for the two teams. For the black, Edwards and Numba. Uh, you're a zappy at us. I think I've probably murdered Getty's surname there. I'm going to leave that one to, to here. Morgan Carter and Caleb Fuller. And then for the white team, Nina Lino, Banks, Elliot Sewell, Ambolino, Perez and Russell just so much talent on the floor and don't forget guys you can also join in by entering the grand prize draw by tweeting HASC18 to enter your chance to win some goodies but ladies and gents we get ourselves underway here at the Brixton Rec Hoops Fix All-Star Classic 2018 and we are with Team Black he has a piter stolen away by Session Russell. Session Russell driving to the basket. And it's followed up and finished almost by Banks. Banks gets a second chance, almost a third. Scramble for possession. Elliot Sewell now gets it to Russell. Russell. That's one fly for three. That's, that's what Session Russell does. And that's a nice way for him to open up this contest. He definitely has that in his game as well. He can stretch it out to the three-point line and break him down and get to the basket. It's so hard to contain and guard, Seshan Russell. He has a Pitus. Goes for three of his own. Can't find the target. That's rebounded now by Fuller, who just took part in the dunk contest. Jonathan Brown was the winner of the dunk contest this year. As Michael Anumba shoots the long two. Manchester Magic's finest young superstar coming through. And here's Russell now. Russell looking for a pass. Finds Elliot Sewell. Derby Trailblazer Academy product. Elliot Sewell working his way to the basket and a travel violation is called. We have some of the finest officials here today keeping the players in check. I mean, they've been a little bit strict in the first game. We could have had a few more highlight reels, but we will take what they're giving us. They're doing a great job today, the officials. He has a Pitus. Nice up and under move. Bounces a little too hard off the backboard. Rebounded now by Ababolino Perez. Session Russell step back. 
for three. This time rattles in and out. Fight for the rebound, but there's Session Russell. Up strong. Turns his hand. And Neil Lino gets the rebound. Now down low, Amabellino Perez. Kicks it out. Banks. Banks kicks to Russell. Russell now with the floater. Gets the almost friendly roll, rebounded by a number. You as a Pytus driving. Elliot Sewell standing strong, Michael a number underneath the basket trying to tip it back in and that's out of bounds. A little bit of a frantic start, Liam. I was just about to say exactly the same, really frantic start from both teams trying to get to the basket. A couple of guys looking like they're just trying to show out a little bit too much in the early going, but those nerves will settle down a little bit. Both teams will just settle into the rhythm of the game. But so far, very frantic start, but we're only just over two minutes in, so long, long way to go. A number. Gets it now. Strong drive. Edwards. Josh Edwards, last season at DME Academy. And he's also been part of the national team setup, and it's his third. And that must be a rarity, a third Hootsfix All-Star Classic appearance. Teammates with Colin Tifo at DME Academy as well, who was in the dunk contest earlier on. Session Russell goes high off the glass, tipped away by Elliot Sewell. Now here's Caleb Fuller looking to push possession forward. A nice in and out move, Caleb Fuller can't compose himself on the finish. But a nice in and out move by him. Fuller saying he took a little bit of contact there as he went to the basket, but it was enough to disrupt the shot and the white team get the ball back. Nice hands there stolen by Fuller. He has a Pytus, gets it ahead to Edwards with the one-handed throw down. There he is, that man, Josh Edwards, starting strong. And now here's Robert Banks. Banks, sourcing, step back, nice hands from Edwards. He's gone again, watch out below, Edwards! Two for two on the one-handed throw down. Huge back-to-back -back plays for Edwards, the former London Thunder, as Leighton Elliott Saul at the other end, answers straight back, but huge two dunks for Edwards. A number, he was a Pytus. Nice angle and nice finish off the glass. And that frantic start has settled down a little bit now, and both teams getting points on the board. Amabellino Perez, Perez hands over to Elliott Sewell, tries to keep his balance. Amabellino Perez now for three. Can't get it to go this time. Amabellino Perez driving onto the left hand, rebounded now by Fuller. A lot less defensive intensity than we saw in the underclass game. These guys willing to go a little bit more isolation. Edwards step back. That was nasty, that step back, and the foul was called. Offensive foul called. Yeah. Interesting call. He did have his arm out there, unable to see from our angle how much pushing he did. A substitution comes in as Saver Richards checks in, as well as Hall. Robert Banks Jr. and Bellino Perez heads to the bench. Briggs and Isley Swain check it into the game. Isley Swain checking into the game. Son of GB legend Jason Swain, the sharpshooter. Also in the building today as well. Amongst a long list of many other big names in British basketball. Savory Richards now down with Hall. Hall fade away. Almost there with the putback. A number now picks it up. A number pushing forward. A nice hands from Mike Savi Richards to knock it away from his possession. And it's an end line possession now for Team Black. A number. Gets it to Edwards. Now with Fuller. Fuller will shoot the three. That's tipped back into the hands of a number. Fuller. Stuck in the mud, finds a number. Now Isley Swain in the corner. Like father, like son. Lights out for three. And Isley Swain, that creative point guard who can really score as well. 28.6 points in the ABL this year. He's really shown the versatility at that guard spot. Session Russell finding Hall with the baby. Alley-oop off the glass. Edwards kicking now, Fuller pump fake drives and unfortunately a travel violation is called. Johnny Hall with a little bit of a slip there, that could have been dangerous. 
So once again, let us know your thoughts and join in with us, like and share this video. Everybody needs to deserve the pleasure of joining us here as Russell drives, nice, past the hall. But Fuller gets his hand to it. Thumbs up from the referee to dictate arrow possession. Team Black will get it. As Fuller will inbound to Edwards. Edwards looks like he's got a spring about him today. Edwards driving, kicks to Swain. Swain, again, back to back threes. That's what he does. He is deadly from three, paint, three point range. Now Russell, Russell floating it, oh! Floating it up and in, looked like a lob. But he'll get it to go if any of the bigs can't get there. Edwards, down low, a number left hand. Those Six. two, great connection between Edwards and a number, dictating everything early for the black team. Really smart play, 16 to nine. Elliot Sewell now caught in the double trap. Russell calls for the screen. With the crossover, Seshan Russell. A foul is called. Foul is called on number nine. Substitutions checking into the game. Walters Lawrence and Tifa and Bet. And Walters Lawrence checking into the game. Gets it in play to Bet. Bet of the right hand side of the ring. Now here's Swain pushing the ball up the floor. Nice bounce pass to Konrad Kantorski from Myersko. Briggs, pump fake. Hands off to Kantorski. Back to Briggs. Briggs shoots it this time. And that's a little bit off key for the big man. Hey, I gotta say that these players are looking fine in these kits today, guys. Big shout out to Jeff.com. Big shout out to you guys for providing this year's Hoops Fix All Star Classic kits. They are looking real nice. As Swain comes up with it, tries to float it in over to Briggs, but can't get it to go. Three minutes, six seconds to go. This first quarter's flying by Liam. It really is. Both teams going up and down as well. And again, two coaches that are rotating all their teams and all their bench early on to get everybody into the game, kind of settle some of those nerves. But we talked about it before. It looked like a couple were just trying to create a little bit too much, which is kind of leading to that frantic pace and allowing the game to go through. But good to see that the referees are laying off the whistle a little bit more so this game and allowing these guys to play through it. And also on the floor, good story to tell is Tyrese Walter Lawrence. He's had a really tough season. Lightning quick guard, suits up for the Classic after a year that started him being ranked in the top 20 at Denkamp. He struggled with injury and then he's recovered from a stabbing here in his hometown of London. And he comes in to prove that he hasn't lost a step. A great story for our move. And now Kantorski with the spin, brings underneath. Kantorski gets it back through the legs, bounce pass. And Briggs gets blocked. Kostorski praying for a finish off those moves. Briggs shot goes up. And the rebound is there for Bailey. Conrad Kostorski, the little magician right now. His game is so smart as well. He can see passing lanes that I don't think anybody else on the floor can see and really creates well for the rest of his team. Had a great season with Myersko this year. 15.3 points and 2.9 assists in the EABL. Now, Walters Lawrence skips it across, stolen away here. Here's George, puts Bet on the slip, Isley Swain. And a foul is called. Foul called. On Walters Lawrence's second personal. And I believe three shots at the line for Swain. This is his first. That's unlike him as a shooter. He has a chance, though, to take himself to double digits. <laughs> S 
Swain misses two out of three. Still a strong lead now for Team Black, 17 to nine. Bet. Nice work from Savory Richards, one of our athletic assets that we have in the country. Great stop on a dime there as well. Once he got into the paint, composed himself, settled down. Tough to stop and finish like that. Konstorski finds Bailey. Players flying through the air to block him. Now Savory Richards, he'll pull up once again. Rebounded by Cameron Bett, driving onto his left hand. No good. Rebounded by Bailey, who's hacked. That's number 23. Savory Richards steps over him. The substitution now for Team White checking into the game. Is Alex Ferguson replacing number 15, Johnny Hall. And yet another Barking Abbey guy stepping onto the floor and Alex Ferguson, a Scotland Junior International of various age groups as well. Kantorski with the crossover and the spin. Kantorski and the tip in there is good. As Drinchich gets the two points to go. Walters Lawrence, crossover, drive, stripped away by Swain. Swain pushing forward, bounce pass to find Kantorski. Swain asks for it back, gives it back to Kontorski, the magician. Cameron Beck talking to him, Walters Lawrence wants to get in front, up strong with a lay in for two. Great hustle there by the young man, Walters Lawrence, to get the deflection and chase after it and get the score. That's what you want to see from your team when you're down. Swain, through the legs, gets it across, three ball now, bounces off the back of the ring. Team White come up with the rebound, Walters Lawrence. He pulls up for a three of his own. And a rebound now by Bailey. Last possession of the quarter, the black team looking to get a sharp early, stepped out of bounds, I think. Offensive foul called, illegal screen called on Bailey. Tough call that, tough call. But it means the White are going to get another final possession of the quarter with only six points the difference. So they could trim this to a one possession game. Cameron Bett looking for an opportunity here to beat the buzzer. Steps back, shakes off his defender, Bett! For the yeah, Cameron Bett! Nice! Puts his defender on ice and knocks down the triple right in his face as he tries to step up. Brings it to a three-point game, and our first highlight of the game, Mr. Jefferson. Cameron Bett, straight out of Ridley College in Canada, freezing the defense of Conrad Kontorski on the step back, and then drilling the free. So just as we said, that error by the black team allowed the white to get an extra possession, and it trimmed it to a one-possession lead. So after an, an early slow start, the white team slowly chipping away and putting themselves in great position. And early scorers on the board for both teams. For the black team, Michael Anumba. Michael Anumba with four, sorry. Isley Swain off the bench with seven, facing the team black. Whereas for team white, it's very spread. Seshan Russell with five, and then three players with two and one with three. Cameron Bett on that last shot at the end of the quarter. So balanced scoring from the white, whereas Team Black, a little bit more heavy scoring from uh, from a number and Edwards, and then Swain off the bench. But great first quarter of action. Both teams showing they're not afraid to get into it. Both teams looking to break someone down. Get us a highlight. Good early basketball and three solid quarters still to go. So a lot more for us to look forward to. As the teams do step back onto the floor, We have posted the live stats link in the comment section, but don't forget to let us know what you're thinking in the comment section below. Don't worry, that holding screen will soon lift as we get back to the action. Second quarter, 19 to 16, three points in it. Team Black are in the lead and in control. 
and Session Russell will get us back in the way. Russell. Driving. What a move by Session Russell. Windmills the ball using the spin off the glass and will get the finish to go. Ferguson. Bet from way downtown. Bounces off the back of the ring. And Tifo gets his hand to it. Russell now, bet again. Ferguson, nice pump fake. Ferguson drives, fadeaway jumper off the glass. And, and Tifo is there with his left hand to tip it in off the backboard. The yeah, athleticism from Carl and Tifo to finish that one. Whilst he was moving away from where the ball was going, tough, tough finish. Getty, you as a Pytus. What a pass, you as a Pytus. What a beautiful dish from him, but possession doesn't go in his favor. Here's Alex Ferguson. You got to be upset at Alex Drinkitz not to shoot that shot there. That would have been the assist of the day. And Tifo stolen away now. Oh my God, watch out. George for two. Cameron, Ca Cameron Bett wanted none of he that. He didn't want any of that. Nothing, nada. Off you go, Jordan Reese George. You go get your highlight. And here's Bett now. With a dime of his own, tries to find Ferguson. Guards letting down the dishes here. A number up strong. That is a grown man's play. Russell. Russell now. Nice shimmy. Session Russell bounces off the back of the ring, rebounded by Antifo. Antifo sizing up his man with the bounce pass now across. Three ball. Off the front of the ring, rebounded again by Antifo. Gets it to Bet. Bet spills it, but ends up in Ferguson's hands. Now with Session Russell. Session Russell steps back, now going all the way. We'll get a finish. Neon Lino followed it up just in case. Session the source, Russell. A number. A number driving out one like a train through the paint. Nobody wants to get in his way. And that's when, you know when coaches say to you when you're younger, if you change direction, you gotta change speed. Michael Anumba with the crossover pass, Russell puts the Jets on to go straight down the lane, then adjusts under the contact and still finishes. Phenomenal move by Michael Anumba, the guard out of Loretto Academy and Manchester Magic. And now he'll head to the, the free throw line chance for a bonus bucket he is that guard though that uses his body and kind of touch around the basket to score in a variety of different ways but he can take some of that physicality he can score in transition I really like the way that Michael Anumba plays now Session Russell with the reverse layup this time can't get it go ball ends up in his possession kicks it out Cameron Bett now for three can't get that to go rebounded by Morgan Carter who's checked into the game for the first time a number, a number again, trying to find a pass. Nice hands there by Russell. He gets the interception. Russell keeping in front of his man. Nice little floater, a little bit too much smarts. And Melino Perez gets it back. He'll let it go for three. And Melino Perez ties up the game, 25 apiece. He was a Pytus from way downtown. A number getting his hand to, he's racking up the rebounds. Nice spin, Edwards kicks to Fuller. Nice hands from Bet. Bet clapping up Fuller. Fuller goes in and out. Pass fake, Edwards. Edwards for free to beat the buzzer. A number follows it up, bounces off the back of the ring. Would have been a highlight reel. Bet now with Russell. I'm Abelino Perez. Now with Cameron Bett, who will let the three go again. Cameron Bett for three, right back at you. Cameron Bett showing that range. And doing the most trash talking on this one. Animated, Carter, Fuller, 
Shakes his body. Fuller. Tough angle. Amabellino. Stripped away by Josh Edwards. Edwards drives baseline. Fuller. Gets it across. You as a Pytus. Shifty with it. With the left hand. Get you as a Pytus. How about that ball movement too for Team Black? That ball shifted from one corner to the other. Then find the slasher in Ewitz Apitis to finish. And now here's a fast break. A number getting forward, a number lays it above the glass. And the timeout is called by head coach Mark Jaram. We've not talked about the coaches yet. Two fantastic coaches, the EABL coach of the year, Jesse Sazan, and the NBL Division I coach of the year, Mark Jaram. Fantastic coaches at the helms of both of these teams. Definitely. Jesse Cezanne, obviously, as you said, EABL East Conference Coach of the Year this season, leading Canterbury High School to their best ever year in what is the elite under-19 uh, league. And also the founder and chairman of NBL club, Kent Crusaders. So Jesse having a great season with that Canterbury High, uh, Canterbury High School team. But then, yeah, Mark Jarum, super successful season for him over at the Leicester Riders and Loughborough Student Riders winning Division 1 and the Bucks Championship. Obviously, I'm involved with that program as well, so no mark inside out, and he's done a phenomenal job with, with the recruitment of guys over at Loughborough and bringing in a team that just really wants to compete and really wants to get better day in and day out, and they just reflect his personality out there on the floor. So great to see two high-quality, high-caliber coaches uh, supporting these guys and putting them on a platform to be able to play at the best of their ability today. And now team stepping back onto the floor. And it's team white who will inbound the ball from the baseline. Five minutes, seven seconds left to go. One point game. Tight, exactly like the last game, exactly how we like it. Remember, like and share. Make sure we get the viewers up on this. Everybody needs to see the best in British basketball. Seshan Russell stepping back. Finds Alexander Ferguson, steps onto his right hand, fade away. Nice move, but it's out of bounds and out of play. Team Black will get possession back. Oh, is somebody calling everybody out? Raf, CLK, I'd work everybody here. Well, why ain't you here? Here's Josh Edwards. A number, a number for three. Bounces off the back of the ring. Russell. Now with Amabellino Perez. He will go strong. Nice finish. What a move to the left hand by Amabellino Perez. Great move onto his left hand as Josh Edwards now onto his left hand. Slips a number. Skips. Three ball now for Fuller, and he rattled that one in for Team Black. I love Caleb Fuller's game, absolutely love it. He's such a skilled wing, has the ability to handle the ball. He can get to the basket, he can shoot the free as we've seen there, and he has great size for that wing position as well. He's gonna be a great pro at some point in his career. Now, Neil on Lino, sorry, yeah, Neil on Lino, Commonwealth Games competitor, knocks down the three. Fuller. Down low. Going to work is Briggs. Dishing it out. You as a Pytus. Gets his own rebound. Nice move. Athletic play. Get you as a Pytus. Showing us what he's got. Elliot Sewell now going to the basket. Foul is called. On the opposite end for you as a Pytus as a holding foul is called. Substitutions coming into the game. Johnny Hall will check in for Team White. Isley Swain for Team Black alongside number 20. Bailey checking back into the game. Definitely a little less ball movement in this game than the one that we saw before, though, as it seems to be one, two pass, and then guys are going one on one or trying to break down on a closeout. But, I mean, the coaches, obviously, Jesse Suzanne and Mark Jaram, letting these guys play a little. I think. These two walkthroughs that we watched earlier were a little bit different to the game before. And maybe because these guys are that little bit older, they can adjust to it a little bit more. They know how to play the game. I'm not saying more so than those younger players in the, the previous game, but at least they have a better feel for it. 
And Elliot Sewell will knock those down. Swain. Tied game, 34 apiece. Three minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the half. Hoops Fix All-Star Classic 2018. A lob pass over to Bailey from Briggs. Briggs gets it back. He'll knock down the three this time. Nice play from Ashley Briggs. As we're down low, Elliot Sewell. Amabellino Perez. Driving baseline, reverse layup. Tipped in by Elliot Sewell. And now here comes Team Black pushing the ball forward. Josh Edwards. Edwards. Back out to Swain. Swain. Now with Fuller. Fuller pulls up. Three ball, no good. Amabellino Perez with the rebound. He keeps on going. Amelino Perez on his left hand. Sharp play from him. Isley Swain. Long pass. Finds Briggs. Briggs getting to the right. And the basket is good. And one. Nice smart play from Briggs. The foul is called on Hall. Substitution now as Conrad Kotorski, the magician, Checks into the game for Edwards. Robert Bank Jr.'s and Walters Lawrence checks into the game for Russell and Sean Nilon Lino. Just looking at the stats as well. So far in the game, both teams shooting reasonably well. Black team shooting 44% from the field, whereas the white team 41%. White team way better from three point though, and I think that's what's keeping them in the game so far. Banks Jr. Amamelino Perez up strong this time. The swipes there, no foul called. Coach Martin Jam gets out of his seat. Now Swain. Swain skips it across. Fuller. Strong drive, stripped away from his possession. Amamelino Perez now pushing the ball forward. Leighton Elliott Sewell with a Yora step through the gap. Elliott Sewell. Oh, yeah. That's what you call good footwork. That was a tiny, tiny gap, and somehow he found a way through it with that Euro hop. And now possession with Briggs. Fuller driving. Bailey dishes through the gap. Fuller up strong under the pressure, and there is Bailey rising high to get that one to go off the glass. Robert Banks Jr. to Hall. Leighton Elliott Sewell getting through the gap again, but a travel violation is called this time. One step too many. Kontorski. Myersko point guard. He's had a great season this year. As he gets the ball to Bailey, who drives baseline. Back to Kentorski. Makes something happen here. Kentorski going at it. Lights it up. Doesn't get anything. Walters Lawrence trying to lock up the magician. Clearly his kryptonite right now. <laughs> and there's that second dad joke right, of the come day. On. I got plenty of them. Banks. Banks Jr. Strong. Take and finish at the rack. Tying it all up at 42 apiece. Just over 20 seconds. So neither team separating. Clock winding down to the final possession. Swain finds Fuller. Fuller now. Before the buzzer. Way before, which means Team White get a chance here. Max Jr. way downtown for three bounces off the front of the ring. And that is the end of the half, 44 to 42. Two points in it. Both teams going at it. As we enter the halftime break, who are your early contender MVPs, Mr. Jefferson? I mean, for me at the moment, you can't look much further than Michael and Numa on Team Black. Obviously looking at whichever team's up. Number with 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists. 
in just 12 and 12 minutes 47 seconds that's a huge performance from him in that time an efficiency rating of 14 so he has his fingerprints all over the game Isley Swain with seven and uh, Ashley Briggs with seven also off the bench for Team Black but Numba definitely pacing them on the opposite side with Team White Seshan Russell has nine and then Leighton Elliott Sewell and Brian Ambolino Perez each with seven apiece I tell you what I've been really impressed with with Team White is Cameron Bett off the bench. His ability to shoot the ball and his craftiness with the ball. He looks like a really great player. Attitude as well. He's clapping in his defender's face. He's looking them eye to eye. He wants to let them know that he's here today to ball out. Yeah, he, uh, Cameron Bett played for England in Division A at the Under-16 European Championships and he's flown in from Canada where he's had a year at Ridley College. Um, but he's heading to Queen's University next season and this is his second Hoopsfix All-Star Classic performance. So, I mean, it's another one of those things to talk about. This is our, our class of 2018. A lot of these players have committed now to either a, a school in America or Canada next season or have committed to go over to Europe. So it's a great chance to be able to see them for what may be the final time on British shores for a while. And a lot of them have committed. You look at guys like Isley Swain committed to Northwestern Oklahoma State for next season. You've got Michael Anumba signed to Winthrop. Caleb Fuller going to UC Davis. I mean, the list goes on and on. We could talk about where these guys have signed to for, for a long time. I mean, it's probably easier to talk about the guys that are still available or haven't. Um, but it's just it goes to show how much British basketball has progressed that now you have 24 guys and the majority of them have been able to secure some sort of scholarship to go over and play college basketball in America. Now I know the, the argument on the flip side of that is that at some point we'd love to be able to have a, a system here where they could stay in this country and they could stay to play university ball and professional ball here. But until we have that system, it's great to see that so many more of them are getting the opportunity to, to go overseas now. And you said it there, you know, until we get to that position. And events like this are a huge step in that direction. And events like this aren't possible without great sponsors supporting us on Hoops Fix uh, All-Star Classic 2018. A big shout out to Molten Basketball. Thank you very much for being the official ball sponsor. And Live Basketball TV, the only place to watch Live British Basketball League all season. One month free trial with the code for promotion HASC 2018. You can also catch the FIBA World Cup qualifiers in there, which GB will be taking part in. Big shout out to University of East London, London's leading basketball university. BBL and National Basketball League players there, Joe Akinwin, Flo Larkai, Abraham Ekro. Somewhere to go if you're thinking about the next step in basketball. Big shout out to Sports Surf for their branding today. Shout out to Jeff, G-E-F-F, -F, Dot com. Thank you so much for these wonderful kits that the boys are playing this season. Straight fire from you guys. Hardwood Ventures, big shout out to Basketball Hall of Fame Belfast, one of the best NCAA overseas tournaments. Make sure you check that out over in Belfast if you fancy a weekend away. And a big shout out to helping with the media today, five or six. Let me play Loughborough Basketball also supporting the event as well as always Ball in Brand and Wilkie TV making sure we are here on the stream live and kicking from the Brixton Wreck. Ladies and gentlemen, lots of supporters here. And Liam, you know, let's talk about the, the advantages that events like this have for the British game. It's huge. I mean, just look at the, we talked about it in the game before, look at the, the demographic of the crowd here. It's not just young people. It's, there's, there's young, there's old. There's all sorts of uh, ethnic backgrounds here. There's all sorts of ages. It's great to see everybody that has some form of love for the game of basketball descends on the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic every single time that the event is run. And that, for me, goes to show how, how much British basketball is growing. And we've seen what happens when people get behind British basketball with the new funding that's come our way from, uh, from government through UK Sport that additional funding to allow the, the GB men's and women's senior teams to be able to operate. That's what happens when everybody gets behind basketball and, and puts their collective weight behind it rather than throwing stones from inside a, a, a greenhouse, a glass house almost. So it's great to see and it's great for the, the players that get the opportunity to, to step out on the floor and play their trade because it's a platform for them. We talked about it before again, there's, there's college coaches in here. I've seen Billy Mims, who's a co uh, college coach at Florida Tech, 
in Division 2 and an old, an old friend of mine, he's here watching. There's another couple of coaches as well that are here watching. And it just allows these young players, these young student athletes still, because a lot, a lot of them are still students as well, the, the platform to be able to display what they're all about, what their game's about, what British basketball is about. And I just love that as an event. It's something that I know both you and I are proud to be a part of. And every single year we want to come back and we want to help out however we can do. I want to make it you know, clear to those viewers at home, you know, a lot of those youngsters now will be thinking, how can I become part of the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic event? Well, the answer is work on your game. Work on your game. Get yourself a highlight tape together. Play some National League basketball at your local club and prove yourself on the stage so that you can get your name out there for events like this and people will notice you know not only do we have the hoops fix all-star classic event we've also got the dang top 50 which is another great uh, event for us to recognize the level of british young players out there liam it really is i i love the the concept of, of den camp and 10 10 10 of these players are currently in the dang top 20 which and I think there was around four or five in the underclassmen game. It just goes a long, long way to show the quality of basketball that there is, but also now the infrastructure that is there to support it and the work that guys like Steve Veer and the Wild Deng do with the Deng camp. It just, it provides more opportunities for these guys to get exposure to college coaches, to professional teams, and to be able to put their game on that level and shout and scream about exactly what it is that British basketball is all about. And uh, everything seems to go from strength to strength. There's some real momentum behind British basketball and the game of basketball in this country at the moment. And a lot of that comes down to the people that are involved in it, but a lot of it also comes down to the players themselves. And like you say, their ability to want to work and to want to get better and to continue to work at their craft. And uh, again, it's just, it's, it's such a great part, um, great privilege to be a part of it all and uh, to, to play my small part in what is the large network and kind of landscape of British basketball. Once again, a big shout out to our sponsors, Molten Basketball, LiveBasketball.tv, UEL, uh, Sports Serve, Hardwood Ventures, Basketball Half Belfast, 506, Let Me Play Love Bro, Always Born in Brand, Wilkie TV and Jeff, our official kit sponsor here today. So teams have now headed over to the bench. As our entertainment team keeps the crowd going, Mr. Funky Town and Narmo Shiri in the building today. I'm thinking this game is screaming out for some sort of highlight play early on. I just wonder whether the coaches, they probably recognize that as well, whether the first play out might be a lob play, might be a little back door for a dunk, just to get the, uh, the atmosphere back up and going after that 10 minute break for halftime. And let us hope for that. As uh, teams now step back onto the floor. Hey, some big names in the crowd today. Luke Nelson, Dan Clark, Orland Jackman also in the building today. Teo Agadengbi. Great British players here. As we get back underway and it's Team Black will start us with possession. Here's Josh Edwards finding Fuller. Now looks for a number who went back door. Walters Lawrence reached out for that. Team Black keeping on the sideline. Edwards drives baseline, goes to the reverse layer. Bounces off both sides of the ring. And into Micah Saver Richards hands. Savi Richards. And Tifo. Walters Lawrence. Now finds Ferguson. Ferguson finding Bet. Bet driving onto his left hand. And that's tipped in the hands of Fuller. Fuller now breaking away. 3v2. He has a Pytus. Edwards. Fuller. Oh, and he can't complete the fast break. Great ball movement by Team Black. Here's Ferguson now. Back to Bet. Bet with the behind the back move. Walters Lawrence. Travel violation call. Tough call on Walters Lawrence. Looked like he just picked up that off foot after he'd moved his pivot foot. He has a Pytus. Now with Edwards onto his right hand, kicks to the corner. Caleb Fuller now for three. Rebounded by Walters Lawrence. 
of the middle of the floor. Now finds Bet. He was hot from three in the first. And he'll get the friendly bounce and roll. He gets it to go. She was roll for Cameron Bet. And you can't complain at that. If you're getting those to go, he's going to be looking to score every time. Edwards with a strong take to the basket. Stares down Bet. Micah Savory Richards dives on the ball. Hustle play. Ferguson. Micah Savory Richards two handed. Kaboom. We know he's capable of that. Edwards now with a number Fuller gets it back to a number he drives stuff tough stand and a second chance of great defense from Walters Lawrence you can't take it away from him but a number a little too strong to get the second chance opportunity great strength from the guard position Michael number and that just shows what he can do I mean when you've got a guard that can come in and get his own rebound like that Take the contact and be able to finish. It's tough to guard. And he's just, he uses his, his size and his strength so well to be able to get good defensive and offensive positioning. And here is Yuazapaitis. House on European name in London. Josh Edwards, step back. Give me that. And the foul is called. Cameron Brett retreating out to him. Couldn't help but make contact as he tried to contest that one. Always tough on Edwards as well, because you, you know he can shoot it and you know he can get to the basket. So you don't want to give him too much space. But if you uh, completely take his space away, he's smart enough to be able to take the contact to still get the shot up and head to the free throw line, as we can see here. And it looks like that year out at uh, DME Academy has done him a world of good as he just continued to progress since playing for various national team levels, under 15, under 16, under 18. And as we said before, his third Hoops Fix All-Star Classic appearance, so he's doing something right. Consistency is key, and he is staying consistent with the way that he's playing in this game. I think Team White managed to, to con the referees a little bit there, saying he got fouled on the free, he only took two free throws. Oh yeah. Smart, smart recognition from the bench. They will let those points go. Every point is vital, 50 to 47. Seven minutes, 32 left to go in the third. As Edwards shot rolls in and out the third one. Good Jesse Sasson. Not too happy with that one, but he'll take it. He got the extra shot, bet now. Dishes, Savy Richards. Cameron Bet punches the air. I love how crafty he is with the ball. That's another nice pass off a, a crafty dribble to get himself into the Morgan paint. Carter wide open for two. And now team in possession, team white. As they get the ball to Ferguson, who'll shoot the three rolls around the ring, rebounded by a number. He has a Pitus. Morgan Carter. Carter rolls around the ring. Rebounded by Antifa. Stolen away by number. Looks up ahead to Edwards. Edwards, he'll fly up high and he'll get that to go off the glass with a little backboard tap. Now Betts in possession with us. Uses Antifo screen. One hard dribble to the basket. Blocked! Joss Edwards. Nothing easy for you, Mr. Bet. And substitutions coming into the game. Drinchic and Kontorski checking for Team Black. Seshan Russell, Robert Banks Juniors, and Nilan Lino check into the game for Team White. Max Seshan Russell with the pump fake. Gets a second look at it. And that's rebounded by Drinchic. Edwards again kicking. Causes so much problems that Seshan Russell gets the steal. Seshan Russell 
hands it off. Neil on Lino can't get it to go, but now here comes Team Black. A number, Kantorski, and he will finish. Off of his right hand. Banks, Ferguson, Session Russell. He'll pull up now for three. And another friendly roll. Shooter's touch. It's got to be that rim. It's got to be that left hand rim. And here comes a number back with possession. Edwards. Drive and kick. A number driving. Nice pass off to Carter. Slips away from him. Substitutions coming in. Johnny Hall will check into the game for Ferguson. Has been in foul trouble. Johnny Hall's got three to his name. And now back to the action. Robert Banks Jr. The Thames Valley Cavaliers. That's knocked off of the legs of Drinchich. End line possession now. And a substitution for Team Black. Jordan Reese George checking into the game. Michael and Number takes a break. As Banks Jr. gets it in, Session Russell this time again behind the arc for three. Trimming that lead to one now for Team Black. So Team White on the run of their own to pull themselves back into the game. And their defense has stepped up a notch off Kantorsky. the back of position. George. And you're very right there, Liam. This game lighting up now. Session Russell with the reverse, tries to put spin on it. Feel like he's forcing it a little bit now though, Russell. Needs to make sure he looks for his teammates. You give it up, you give it back. He's definitely one of those players as well that can just go off in a hurry. And so he's always gonna stay shooting. But yeah, I agree. He needs to look for his teammates a little bit more and then get himself a little bit more space. Drinchich, shot rattles in and out. Rebounding on by Banks. Banks pushing up possession, keeps it in play, almost spills it. Banks onto his left hand, driving, still on his left hand. Almost get the and one opportunity. Foul is called. And number six, George. His first personal. And now we've got Banks on the line. Robert Banks, another one of those players that was uh, at Den Camp last year, currently rated number nine on the Den Top 20. Great offensive player, high IQ as well. And he's another that's deadly from three point range. And a rebound now for Hall, gets it to Banks. Banks will attack again, hangs up, almost gets a second chance. Carter picks it up. Kontorski. Oh, Magicians! Put Session on ice! And George with the rebound, the Magician. Getting slippery, Session Russell! He'll throw it down, down the other end. Kitenge bumps his chest as he watches teammate throws it down. Now George, oh my God! He was gonna give a crucifixion right there. But Johnny Hall is lucky he has that weight about him. I thought that was a good block by Johnny Hall. He was vertical, he was straight up. I thought he was going up and that, that to me is a legal play. That should have been a play on, that's a block. I don't know about that call. Wow, now, now things are starting to heat up. This is what we've all been waiting for, ladies and gents. Like and share this stream the class of 2018 here at Hoops Fix All-Star Classic. And George misses the second, he'll get his rebound, almost. As that old saying, ball don't lie. Johnny Hall, good defense. And the ball bails him out. And now Team White possession, Micah Savory Richards back into the game. As Banks kicks to the corner, Session Russell under pressure. Gets a second chance here. 
Hands it off to Hall. Hall with the mid-range. Rolls in and out. Savory Richards. Seshan Russell tips it up. And another tip there. Nilan Lino checks into that one. White team extending their lead to four, so their run. Apparently the black team struggling with it. Johnny Edwards. Hall, another block. Yeah, Johnny Hall now starting to make his press and felt. Had a tough start because of the fouls he faced. But look out, Drinchic has got room. Drinchic and a hard foul there. By Nilan Lino. I would call that unsportsmanlike if I'm honest with you, but it's just a foul and two shots to come for him as Isley Swain will check into the game, replacing Jordan Reese george Caleb Fuller also checking into this one. And that's, that's a, a reaction by Coach Jesse Zazan to Team White's biggest scoring run of the game of 11 points, realizing that he needs some more scoring on the floor and it doesn't come much more instant than Caleb Fuller and Isley Swain. Those two are going to be able to light it up in a hurry. And Drinchic is good for two from the line. And a substitution as Bailey will check in for Drinchic. As now Robert Banks Jr. Seshan Russell stepping back. Conrad Katorski. Here we go. One on one. This is what we come to see. Seshan Russell has to pass it up. Amabellino Perez. He, oh, he gets shifty with it again. Russell is there but steps out of bounds. End line ball. It's always entertaining when you see two players line up for a one on one. I think that's a response to the earlier handles that we saw from Kontorski. Russell trying to go at him, and here's the two matched up again. Fuller. Fuller for three. And it uh, hits the stanchion, which means possession will go the other way. Robert Banks Jr. still controlling possession here. A session Russell goes in the paint against Kantorski, but Kantorski is not giving him anything easy. Swain, Kantorski, pump fake, pass fake, and the finish, the magician. Again, and another Deng guy. He's in the Deng top 20 as well. So there's so many of them out here that are, are showing out, and Comrade Kantorski showing us everything from his range to the three point to his craftiness with the ball to his magic with his passing lanes. He is a high level player. Russell, Russell Kantorski again. This is the matchup. Oh, he pull up, bounces off the, the front of the ring. I will ask you in, in, in a little bit more time. One minute's 25 left on the clock. Who's getting the best out of each other there? I wanna, I wanna know your thoughts on that one. Here's Swain. Swain now for three, rebounded by Neil Lino. Nino Lino, big old pass, way away from his teammate as this quarter starts to wind down. 60 apiece, all tied up. Doesn't get much closer than this going into the fourth quarter. Briggs floats it up to Fuller. Fuller was going for that one. Banks. Elliot Sewell, blocked by Briggs, but into the hands of Amabellino Perez, who cleans it up with the left hand. Now Fuller. Kantorski versus Russell again. Russell gets his hand to it, but just out of bounds. Those two really, really going at it now. Both wanting to get stops, both wanting to break the other one down. You can see a little smile on the face of Seshan Russell. Hey, I'm up for that. Uh-oh. Steal now. Leighton Elliott Sewell. Oh, you're a step but slips. I think he hit his knee quite hard there on the floor. 
And he's good. A little slippy down there. All that hard work. Don't forget, like and share this post. Let's get this to as many people as possible. They need to be checking in with us. 16 seconds, clock winding down, two point game. Swain spins away from the double team. And the foul is called as Fuller heads to the line. Nine seconds left on the clock. Fuller with a chance to tie the game up to two apiece. And then it'll look like we'll have a, a one offense. And I, I, I've got a feeling Coach Jaron might call a timeout shortly. See if we can draw something up. It looks like he's telling Robert Banks to head down to the corner of the court. Oh, I, don't, I wonder if they're going to get it and go and just run out the last nine seconds because Banks is heading straight down to the opposite corner. Swain's picked him up, but Fuller now is still on the line. Fuller knocks down the second, times the game up. Nine seconds left to go. Seshan Russell. Come on, finish it with a one-on-one -on -one here. Russell. Driving, knocked away, Bailey. And that's the end of the third quarter, 62 apiece. Great game of basketball here at the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic 2018. Class of 2018 fixture. Hey, let's get your thoughts on that one. Actually, I want to know your verdict first. I mentioned it earlier on. Russell or Kantorski? <sighs> I'll put tough you in a spot. Goal. I'm you so have. I think at the moment, I got to go with Kontorski just because I feel like Seshan Russell is just trying to force it a little bit too much in the one-on-one -on -one matchup, whereas Kontorski is still playing within the offense of his team. He's trying to find his teammates. He's trying to break them down and then hit to the shooter or get to the rack. And it seems to be the more productive of the two at the moment. But if you look at their stat line, Seshan Russell, 15 points, four rebounds, and one assist. And you compare that to Kontorski, who has just four points and one rebound. But it feels like Kontorski is actually setting, setting his team up more. And it's, it's when then you look at the hockey assist. So has he made a great pass for someone else to make a pass to his teammate? Um, exactly. But yeah. it's great to see. That's what we came out here for. We came to see those one-on-one -on -one matchups. We came to see some high-level basketball. We came to see the best of British. And we are definitely seeing that right now. And... Uh, Mr. Nita in the middle of the floor at this moment in time. Big shout out to Sam Nita uh, for, for piloting and leading the way forward for this Hoops Fix event and HoopsFix.com and his team. Thank you very much. And his appreciation is being shown right now. You know, ladies and gents, there's not many people like this in the British basketball community. Big shout out to you, Sam. We love what you do for the game. But also now, guys, as we start to make our way to the fourth quarter, everybody, it's time to get those MVP votes in. Who have you got for MVP? Liam, who is your early MVP vote? I'm still not looking much further than Michael Anumba. He's had a great game for, the, for Team Black. 12 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. You can't look much further than that. He's just shown it all. He's shown the ability to be able to shoot the ball, He's shooting six for eight from the field. Only one, uh, one miss from three. And then a couple more misses inside. So he's really been doing it all for Team Black. And uh, pretty much what we expected from him as well, actually, coming in the game. We hyped him up a little bit at the start of the game. So it's, it's great to see. Um, but there's a lot of good talent out there on display. There's other players that have stepped up. Uh, Josh Edwards for Team Black also having a great game with 10 points personal. So it could go either way. At the minute, though, I'm going with, uh, with Michael Anumba. And 10 minutes left in this one, and I'm sure we he's on the floor now. We will see more of Michael Anumba. He's hey, also got some meshing in the comments as well. Let's not forget as well, it's currently 62 apiece. If Team White win, you can't be giving the MVP award to someone on the black team. So then you've got to look at one of the other teams. You maybe look at a Brian Ambolino Perez, who's had a great game as well. I don't know. It could go anyway. So it does come all down to this. 62. And Walters Lawrence steps out of bounds. And Team Black now with the advantage. He's saying he got pushed. I think there was a little bit of contact. I'm not sure it was enough to, to be moaning too much. Now here's Swain. Swain now to Fuller. Doing a great job, Fuller. 
finding a number. There he is. There's that man. Kick it out. Fuller. Fuller can't give him the assist, but there's the rebound. Almost gets it to go. A number calling for the foul. Elliot Sewell. Cameron Bett. Bett pulls up short, gets his own rebound. Bett now. Walters Lawrence skips it across, and Tifo, he drives baseline. Nice defense there from Bailey. And Tifo's shot is no good, but here's Swain now. Swain. Bailey. Bailey, big block! Get out of here! Elliot Sewell says, give me that. I'll take the ball back to Derby. A number for three. Rebounded. Carter tries to go up with it again. And there's Elliot Sewell putting himself about. And there's Bet in the corner off the front of the ring and Walters Lawrence back into the hands of Elliot Sewell turns the corner well holds onto it tight fades away Elliot Sewell and Tifo tips it into the hands of Isley Swain Swain the foul is called good use of his body Both teams looking for their first score of the fourth quarter, over a minute and a half into it. A number, what and a there move! It is. Michael, a number with the body shake. Get off me. I'm going to go to the other side of the ring and finish. Bet. And a blocking foul is called. And, and, you know, a comment that we've seen on here is a men amongst boys. Would you agree with that comment, Mr. Jefferson? I'm not sure if I go that far. There's some real athletes out here on the floor, but at the minute, he's the one that's dominating the game without a doubt. Um, and I, I just love what he brings to the game. And we've talked about him all game long, really. He's just been a, an ever present in this one. Now here's Bet. Bet down low and Tifo. And Tifo now onto his right hand, floats it up high. Amabellino Perez. How many points has he got? Because he's sneaking. That's taking him to 11 personal. Second in the team in white. A number gets it in to. There's a bite, and there's a number again. The pass off Edwards. Another two points for him. Great little give and go action to get a number slash into the basket. Amabellino Perez with the crossover on Carter. Goes up strong. Carter will collect the rebound. He was a Pitus. Hesitation, no look past the Carter. Carter passes knocked into the hands of Edwards. Edwards to Swain. Swain shoots it, and an offensive foul has been called on Michael a number for an illegal screen. I'm not sure I can call which way this game's gonna go. 66, 64. It's been like Give and take the whole way. Both teams just back and forth with it. Could go. Amelino Perez! Where did that come from? You tell them, young sir. Oh, and the crossover. You as a Pitus, the foul is called no basket. This is getting, I can't go from one play to the other. Amabellino Perez out of nowhere with the two-handed jam. I think I'm going to switch my mic off and just enjoy this one. I can't keep up with you. My goodness, end-to-end -end stuff. And another dunk on someone under the basket. Our second one of the day. We are being treated to some highlights in these two games. Unbelievable basketball here. As always, can I add, there are always highlights from this event. There has never been an event where there's not a highlight. And, 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 and that just says everything you need to know. As now Elliot Sewell drives. Oh, and Tifo. He, oh, Walters Lawrence showing off the handle. I'm a Bellino Paris Euro step. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's come to play today. Swain 
Bounce pass, he was a pie toss. Game opening up a lot now. Game is opening up for easy looks. One point game, 69, 68, 635 left to go. Walters Lawrence. He drives, he finishes over Josh Edwards. This is the sort of basketball we came to see end to end. Anything you can do, I can do better. Swain with the behind the back and Tifo's there in time. Edwards skips it across. Carter, catch and shoot. Tipped away Amabellino Perez. End line, team wise substitutions now. Checking into the game is number 15. Ashley Briggs and number 11, Caleb Fuller. And now a number, Edwards. Edwards driving hard. Walters Lawrence working hard to get his hands in there. You as a Pytus. Oh my goodness. The up, the ups that young man has. He was hanging in the air. His ability to be able to finish through contact, like you say, on that, on that hang in the air is just tough. And we're seeing why he's a former MVP of the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic. He earned that accolade in 2015 in the under 17s game. And he's been out at Woodstock Academy in the USA this year, heading to Flagler College next year. His fourth Hoops Fix All-Star wow. <laughs> Classic appearance. That's got to be the record. And he's showing you why right now. His ability to finish in and around the basket is just second to none. So the score at this moment is tied up. I can understand from our, our viewers it's a little bit behind on the live stream, but it is all tied up, 70 apiece, 5.59 left to go. And now an end line possession as substitutions check back into the game. Neilan Lino replacing Elliot Sewell. Elliot Sewell's done a great job actually. He's brought some intensity, shown us his athleticism. Um, and he's not shied away from the competition at all. He's had a great season at Derby this year. Now, Seshan Russell's back into this game. Turns the corner on a number. Tries to find the pass. Can't do that, so Team Black will get it back. Josh Edwards. Edwards. Now to Briggs. Briggs with a right-handed floater. Can't get it to go. Briggs has still got it back, though. You has a Pytus. No look pass to the corner. Edwards. Can't get the three-point shot to drop. And Seshan Russell now pushes the ball forward to Neilan Lino. He'll pull up in transition. Amabellino Perez with the rebound. Kicks it out now. Cameron Bett. He'll shoot the three. The three bounces off the front of the ring. Neilan Lino will finish it up. He has a Pytus. Jab. Let's the shot off. Seshan Russell. In and out dribble, Michael and number stays in front. Neil and Lino, Bet, and Tifo. And Tifo now with a mid range shot. Count it. Four point lead now for Team White. As Josh Edwards continues driving. And that switch from his right hand he was leading with to his left hand. Credit to his athleticism. Tough, tough take as well. We've been talking, <laughs> I feel like we've been talking about the same guys all game long. A great finish for, or a great up and under finish for him there. Edwards knocking down the first. Hey, and as I mentioned, you know, look at these fantastic kits. Probably one of the best kits I've seen at Hoops Fix. Jeff.eu, if you're interested in ordering yourself a, a catered design as Neil and Lino drives to the basket. That's uh, GEFF.eu as well for anyone that's looking. And I've got to second that. They are, they are some of the nicest spreads we've seen in the Hoops Fix All Star Classic. Neil on Lino, shots a little overpowered. Xavier Richards looking now, and Melino Perez. Caleb Fuller! Get that out of here! Edwards, 
a number. Bounces off the back of the ring. Session Russell, Amabelino Perez. Oh! Oh, oh my goodness! God. No, no, oh, no, my Caleb. goodness! No, no, no! Oh, my goodness! Amabelino Perez shuts down the game. Shuts it down. Crowd around the court. Not this time, Caleb. I got you this time. The team, the bench is cleared. The bench is on the floor. There's a photographer on the baseline who <laughs> got hit as he came down. And after Caleb Fuller rejected Brian Lambolino Perez on the last one, oh he came my through God. and he put it on his head. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Oh my word. Wow, wow, wow. This game in this quarter has been unreal. Here's Edwards. Edwards, now with Briggs, oh my god, a number now, easy look for two. Hey, it's two points, there's just under four minutes, let's get this thing tied up and go into overtime. I want more free basketball. Session Russell kicks it out, Amabelino Perez for three. Off of a team white shirt and team black. I think everybody's just about caught their breath back after that. That was unbelievable, Fuller came with a big block said no, Amabelino Perez says try me again young sir. He tried, he tried. Amabelino Perez flew through the sky. So now two shots on the line, team fouls has been called. And now, guys, come on, get those MVP votes in. Does Brian Amabellino Perez take it? Because that is two nasty dunks he's provided for us. Can you give it to him? He's got, how, how is his stats looking right 17 now? 17 points, nine rebounds, a 21 efficiency rating. Oh, my word, this game is giving it, just giving us it all. Oh, what else is there to ask for? Session Russell. And now Sean Nealon Lino drains it for three. And he'll put Team White in the lead by three. Because apart from the individual importance, there's the, the small affair of a, of a three point game right now as Fuller fries up a three of his own. Micah Savory Richards with the fancy finish. Getting jiggy with it. And the white team bench up on their feet, applauding. They can feel themselves. If they can get a stop here and another score, they're going to stretch the lead out to the biggest of the game. Session Russell, stop and pop. Amabelino Perez knocks it into the hands of Hall now. Neil on Lino again for three. Johnny Hall with the rebound. He's driving nice hands from Briggs. Now a number on the break. Gets it to Edwards. Watch out. He scrapes that one in, but he did mean it. He brings the game to a three-point gap. Neil Lino. A number tries to reach round him. Kicks it out. Amabelino Perez. So boop, boop, cool. boop, boop, boop. So cool with it as well as he, he flips up the three and trots back onto defense. Six-point lead for the for Team White. And here it is. Kentorski versus Session Russell, but Russell reaching a little bit too much here. Kentorski gets a second chance. Substitutions now checking in for both teams. Robert Banks Jr., Alex Ferguson for Team White, and Morgan Carter and Yazapaitis will check into the game. Yazapaitis for the shooter. It looks like Brian Abelino Perez taking a short break as, as Coach Jaram sits him at the end of the bench to say, you're sitting here, you're going straight back in. I just got to get you a breather for the last two minutes. Don't forget, this is a packed out rough house right now for the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic 2018. Sellout. And that's what you get. That is why it's a sellout. Russell. Stripped away a number. A number's going to push forward here. A number driving, blocked by Ferguson. Shuts him down. A 
Sam Nita is going to have some work to do tonight. The highlights from this game, my goodness. We have blocks and dunks left, right and centre. He has a Pitis now, well inbound possession. Fuller now on the three-point line in the corner. Big three required. He has a Pitis, big rebound from a number. Rips that one out of the sky. Foul is calling number 25, Russell. Still a six-point game, one minute 32 left to go. Lots, lots of time. And team fouls too, so that's a big time play for Anumba because he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Hopefully he can convert these now for Team Black, get a little bit closer, keep up that energy in here. I don't know how people can start leaving this gym early. I've got no clue how they can do that right now. Value for money, we got that. So a slight delay, I think, while they just uh, sorted out a wet patch on the floor. So a number now going to go to the line of shoot with free throws. These are big free throws, though, for Team Black. And you can hit these two. It trims the lead to just four. And still a lot of basketball to play. So, guys, please get those MVP votes in. We want to see who you got as MVP. We know you're going to have Brian Amabellino Perez. But there has been other players throughout the rest of the game as well. So get those MVP votes in via the Facebook comments. We need to hear what you've got to say. You guys have been interacting all day long and we love that. So stick with us here. One minute, 25 left to go. Still lots of time to get those votes in. Session Russell's pass, knocked away by a number. Great athleticism. Stripped away now. Yuazapaitis ends up with possession. Oh, Shamgod, but can't keep it in play. Now Russell, Seshan Russell, things are getting a little bit slippy out here. That's because the action's so hot. Saving Richards, holds it in the air. Neil and Lino over the back foul, clears out Caleb Fuller. And now that's an off-ball foul, which means two shots. Two shots now for Caleb Fuller. He can put them within three. 55.7 seconds left on the clock. Still shouts for a number as MVP, because you're right, he does a lot off the ball that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. I don't know, Team White up, up at the minute. Brian Ambolino Perez, 20 points, 10 rebounds, and two huge highlights. You can't look much further than that. If the white team managed to close this one out, if the black team take it, yeah, maybe I'm going to side with everybody on the stream and say a number. Difficult to call, though. Fuller's made the first now to bring them within three. They need a big defensive stop if they make this. Here we go, ladies and gents. 55.7 seconds on the clock. If you're not tuning now, Dave Owens thrown in his two cents. Amabellino or a number basing on who wins. Session Russell, though, with a tough finish there. Josh Edwards. Carter, Carter driving, kicks, a number. Spilled, possession spilled. Session Russell throws it up. Neil Lino tries to get his hands to it. 25 seconds left on the clock. Still time for Team Black. Long pass, Savory Richards knocks it out of bounds. 20 seconds on the clock. Substitutions coming in now. Canceled the substitutions. Now, five points. You know, it's not unachievable. We need a three here. Three and a two. You as a Pitus. What they can't do is let it go. There's Edwards. Oh, and oh, the no, foul is called! Josh Edwards! Oh my goodness! This game just gets better. And this is what I said. If you're leaving the gym right now, where are you going? Where are you going? Back to a two-point game with a chance to make it five. <laughs> Come on now, guys. Come on now, guys. Edwards on the line, 15.1 seconds. Unbelievable game of basketball. Ed 
Edwards makes and a timeout is called by coach Mark Jarum. Guys, oh, if you've not tuned in, please like and share. If nobody is watching this, we got over 130 people tuned in right now. The rest of the country does not know what they are missing. They're going to have to wait till the hoop fix highlights come out. It's, it's unbelievable right now in the Brixton Rough House. Oh. Home of Hoops Fix All-Star Classic, Liam, lost for words. I just need to catch my breath. What a play by Josh Edwards. I mean, we were off, we were out of our seat, on our feet, jumping up and down. And then he makes that free throw too. But Team Black, they're gonna have to foul on the inbound. Less than 24 seconds on that on the game clock. 15.1 to go in the game. Very interesting to see what Mark Jarum is drawing up for out of the timeout, whether he's going to uh, draw it up just to get the ball inbounded and then allow Team Black to foul, or if he's going to try and get a score. I'd like to think he's going to try and take the foul. And Brian Ambolino Perez stepping back out onto the floor and looking at that five that he's got out there, all of them relatively good free throw shooters. So expecting that foul and sending them to the line. Although Black only on two team fouls. So they're going to have to foul a few times in order to get them at the free throw line. <laughs> I can't call this one. Here we go, guys. Hold on to your hats. Here we go. Hoops Fix All-Star Classic 2018. And classic is the key word there. This is a classic right now. Black have to switch everything. They have to switch everything on the way out, and they do. They're looking to disrupt and take the pass. And, Russell and, and there's the first one. Yes. But they're going to switch everything. They're going to look to try and get a hand in and a deflection and then try and get it out into transition and score. And then as soon as the ball is inbound, they can foul. That's the third team foul, so only two more. And then they'll be at the line. So White looking to take as much time off the clock as possible. Here we go. Banks gets it in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Running the clock. Session Russell gets the foul. And that's fine. That's fine for Team White. They took five seconds or 4.1 seconds, sorry, off the clock. So if they can get that same again, and that's where that distraction play when their team is switching out. Black switched out, but they didn't call through the switch. So it left uh, Sean Nilalino wide open on the high post. And again, Nilalino again. And, the and there's that foul. So Russell's going to be the one that goes to the line. He was looking for the ball that time. So I believe now we're going to the line. Two shots two shots now if he makes them gives us another three point gap that has been how it's been all game three point gap as substitutions coming in who are they bringing in right Isaac now? Swain you don't bring in anybody other than that deadly three point shooter that sharp shooting Swain blood let's see uh, firstly big moment Session Russell has to make these free throws definitely free throws win games and he shoots the first, knocks it down. He's got the second to go. 8.2 seconds left on the clock. As Russell now knocks down a second. Timeout called now by Team Black. Now this is where the coaches and the selection of coaches comes into play. Because it's now up to the coaches to find their man the look that could potentially, at this moment for Team Black, tie it up. Or the defensive effort from Coach Mark Jarrum, what he decides to do on defense to win them the game. And you know what's really, I, I saw this situation in one of the Boston Celtics playoff games this season where they were, they were up three against the Milwaukee Bucks. And they, uh, Milwaukee had a sideline out of bound. And the Celtics decided to go with a five-man zone, but all five men on the perimeter. And so they left the lob and they left the two-point layup open, saying, go ahead, take it, take that two points, foul us and send us to the free throw line again. In that game, they managed to inbound it to Middleton, and Middleton knocked down a deep three anyway. I mean, he was way out. But that's the first time I've seen someone in this situation go with a five-man zone on the perimeter. So intriguing to see whether they go with a man or whether they go with a zone. I'm just going to sway more with the man, but I would have loved to have seen some creativity in the coaching and throwing that zone out there. I mean, who knows? Jaron might have overheard you there with his thoughts. And he's just checking how many timeouts he's got at this moment in time. Well, as his assistant coach with Love for Basketball, I'm sending him telepathic waves <laughs> saying, go with that zone, go with that zone. And it doesn't look like he's going, look, nah. pointing up man-to-man. -man. Not as close as we thought we were. No, but 
I, I believe they will switch again. Um, and here we go. Here we go. And there it is. There's Isley Swain. I can see him coming up right now. He's got to get the ball in. Oh, stolen away. But you as a Pitus has to drive. Foul. No. Edwards again. Doesn't get it this time. And, and that is the, it. That is the ball game. What a game of basketball, ladies and gentlemen. If you stuck with us right through to the end, you have been rewarded with one of the most entertaining games of basketball we have ever seen at the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic 2018. What an absolutely crazy event it has been this year. But now that leads us to the small matter of the MVP. Let's not, let's not not talk about the quality of basketball that we've seen here today as well in both the, the underclass and game and then this, the, uh, the class of 2018 game. The, just, the level of basketball, the talent that we have in this country, it's all just on, it's, it's forever growing, it's forever raising that bar and it, it's great to see that there was just so many talented guys on the floor for both Team White and Team Black today. And all credit to Sam Nita and the guys at Hoops Fix for all the work that they've done in putting on this event. And I know we're going to talk about the sponsors as well that help us put on games like this. But those sponsors have, uh, have really helped to, uh, to continue the tradition of the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic. And we're, we're super thankful to all of them for that as well. And now the team's just coming by to show their appreciation to the table officials, etc. Guys, come on, keep those MVB votes coming in. We all know it's either going to go Team White or Team Black. And I think everybody's pretty much sold. If it's Team Black, they've got their man. If it's Team White, they've got their man. It's, it's, it's lined up right now. So it's just a matter, you know, of, of whether it can be undone. No, there's no matter about it. It yeah. is Brian Ambelino Perez. There is no doubt about it. 20 points, 10 rebounds. You can't go no further than that. Two highlight plays, the biggest dunk I've seen at the Hoops Fix All-Star Classic. I'm having none of it. Brian Ambolino Perez, MVP. All right then, guys, let's find out who the official MVP winner is. After Team White took victory. And Team White getting gassed up right now, enjoying it. And why should they not? They all earned the right to be here. They should savor every, every single moment. What a privilege it is to be here on this stage. But now we're getting ready for this announcement. Now let's find out um, if it's as clear cut as you say, Liam. Come uh, on, it's not even close. <laughs> it's not even close. Uh, I'm guy, trying, to, guy I'm, came I'm to, trying ball to stay today. neutral. I'm done with neutral. As soon as that dunk came down, I'm done with neutral. And we've got um, Orla Jackman here to present the MVP award. London Town home favourite. Uh, obviously done a great season this year with the Cheshire Phoenix. But now the debate that everybody's been talking about. There's no debate. There's no debate according to Liam. I have to stay neutral until it's announced, man. There's no debate. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. 20 points, 10 rebounds. Oh. Here it is, guys. It's Brian Amabellino Perez takes the MVP. Unbelievable from that young man. We had Michael a number down to the third quarter. I said, time to change. And he proved to us that there was time for that to change. And now he rightly deserves that MVP award. What an unbelievable performance in that fourth quarter from both teams. Had everybody up on their feet, everybody on the edge of their seats. Unbelievable event this year. Absolutely fantastic. And before we finish off with our final remarks, important. Let's sign out with the sponsors. Big shout out to Molten Basketball. Huge thanks for the official ball sponsorship.
thank you so, so much for your support this year. Live Basketball TV. Remember, you can watch every live BBL game right there. You pick, we roll. University of East London, London's leading basketball university. Sports serve, Hardwood Ventures, Basketball Hall of Fame, Belfast. Make sure you check that out. Five or six, let me play Loughborough. Always balling brand, Wilkie TV, and Jeff.eu, the most fire kits we have ever seen at Hoops Fix. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your support. Final words, Liam Jefferson. Just an unbelievable event all round and great to see the Classic back after a year hiatus. And hopefully we go on and build on the success of today. And great to see so much British talent. The future is bright for British basketball if these young men are anything to go off. Thank you very much for your thoughts and your analytical intelligence, Mr. Liam Jefferson. We wish you all the best as pre-season now officially begins, ladies and gents. We're getting ready for next year. Do not miss out. Share, like, subscribe. You know the place. Number one for British basketball. Hoopsfix.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Ty Hadja and Liam Jefferson's been with me today. Thank you very much and good night.